Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. The following audio is via a Skype call. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Oh, my gosh. This is an amazing show. This is our Sheer Alchemy show with my co-host, Leslie Fontaine. I'm Dr. Pat. Now, get a load of this. Making the right decisions. How do we know? I think, Benny, there's like some song with that. But I love this today. Making the right decisions. How do we know? Today, Leslie's going to take us on a journey, as she does every show and when she works with all of you individually, through this maze that we like to call transformation and change. And what happens when we step out and we think that we have all of these things on our plate, we don't realize we've asked for them, then we go to the word overwhelm, then we look at decisions we've made, are they wrong, are they right? Do our heads want to explode in the process? Well, if any of this is something you're going to relate to right now, this show is for you. Leslie has been somebody that has said yes, because that was a decision she made. She said, yes, I am Leslie Fontaine, and I am somebody that has taken a message out in the world called Sheer Alchemy. Now, I travel around the world now. And what do I do? I show up in front of all of you all, the fabulous loyal listeners we have. And what do I do when I do that? I bring a level of truth that includes the ascended master, source energy, and the highest vibrational potentiality that you have. The question really then becomes, and maybe we can start here, are we or do we want a life of abundance? And I wonder how we even make that decision. Leslie. It's great topic, making the right decisions. How do we know? Isn't it the great topic? It is the great topic. Oh. And, uh, you know, I have been traveling a lot, working with so many people, and this issue comes up in a lot of forms. Some look pretty and some look really messy. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we grow up in a world that's got a lot of right, wrong thinking. You know, there's that whole thing, oh, my God, I'm going to make a wrong decision. Already inherent in that is fear. Already yeah. in there is like there is going to be some consequence that will be so bad. And this is, you know, where I usually bring up inner child stuff because our inner child, you know, was constantly suffering consequences with no power to retaliate or you know change the order of things or bring any power to the situation so you know to get clear about who we are what we are what we're doing the next thing we need to do what to do with things that show up your intro is perfect we have to get totally real with what's showing up within us and one thing i find that we truly truly resist is admitting our fear We have to admit our fear in these pockets. Otherwise, we keep engineering our world from that place. We just do it over and over and over. I call it same energy, different outfit. We can call it like, you know, wherever you go, there you are, you know, (laughs) carrying that same stuff. And you're going to create the same partner, the same job, the same energy, the same frustrations, the same antagonism, the same fights, you know, or it could be the opposite, the same abundance, whatever you're showing up with. I meet a lot of people that are very stuck and um, paralyzed in their field because they've got one part of them that's totally into abundance and thinking the best and they got another part of them that's so rigidly steeped in fear so 
unifying those is what shifts us, right? That's what growth is. That's what our lessons are. So ultimately today, this isn't just about, hey, how do I get what I want in this life? How do I step into stuff? It's about how do I learn quickly all the lessons on my life path, shift into abundance, shift into the energy that I'm supposed to carry in this world and live the life that's for my highest good and the highest good of everyone involved. That's my speech, and I'm sticking to it. And you should stick to it, right? Because if you're not going to stick to it, chances are none of us will. Because if we don't have someone like you helping us realize, you know, what it is we do not see. And definitely, Leslie, when we are talking about making decisions, there is a blind spot that we don't see. You know, it's a really interesting thing, this term blind spot now. There's a, there's a number one or I don't know how, what number, but in the top 10 ranking hit show, that's called Blind Spot right now. And the show is all about this woman that shows up unexpectedly, full body, full of tattoos, all full of messages. And so you're watching this team of people trying to decipher the message. And I am fascinated by this show because in the end, when they come to that place of a decision point, guess what shows up? Is it the tattoo or is it intuition? Mm -hmm. And so in the scheme of things, what role does intuition, does guidance from the ascended masters or whatever people believe in, what role gets played in those? Well, that is um, really the crux of things here. You know, Mm -hmm. first of all, we come into this world with our soul, our higher self. We show up in the world with a personality. We have personas that we pluck on on top of that right? The persona I show up with at home, the persona I show up with at work. And so it can get very complicated as to what I want. It's almost like which you wants it, right? There's all these parts of us that are that are wanting things. So on the spiritual path, we're always wanting to really check in with the higher self, with our purpose, with who we are and what's going on. And so when something surfaces within us that, you know, really feel a strong desire for something we want to shift into that thing is showing up on purpose that is a part of our soul essence and it's taking us in a direction that will be for our greatest good and so what happens everybody wants it to just suddenly just work out they want source to just come in wave the wand the ascended masters and archangels to just lift us off the ground and just plop us over there no effort no shifting no work And often the path is different. Nobody wants to hear about hard work, and this isn't a hard work exercise. But there is some effort involved in shifting because whatever is showing up that we're to move into, it is about us shifting. So we may have to take a couple of detours. We may have to go this way and that. But we're surfacing our fears, our core wounds, some of our triggers, right? We've all got triggers. We know those ugly triggers that come up and, you know, somebody touches that button in us and we just scream. And, And all of these things are coming up to be healed. So, so much of our path is about healing. So when we bring in the masters, the archangels, and we start shifting, what's beautiful about them is they're bringing in this very pure energy, this beautiful, just higher energy, right? It's not low level down in the mud, you know, where we're slinging at each other and reactive and all that and thinking small. It's much higher, much more expansive, much bigger. It's from that place that we choose and we make decisions. Is it so that everything works out and we don't have to lift a finger? No. It's that that's the part of the guidance of moving in that direction. We need to learn how to work with that, as you've brought up, bring them in and allow them to participate in the path. But this idea that it's all going to get sewed up in a neat little package is not what it's about. Well, yeah. I mean, we often wonder in our lives, Leslie, and this is really probably a great place to start, you know, along the lines of what you're talking about, is this idea of bad decisions. I know it and uh, that you've heard it from the people you work with, that people show up and say, Leslie, I should have never done that. Mm. I should have never agreed to that. I should have never gotten a relationship. I should have never taken the job. I should have never gotten divorced. I mean, how often do you hear that, even though they're not saying, Leslie, guess what? I've made a a bunch of bad decisions, but they're like, shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? Well, I'm actually getting, you know, a very different response from people right now. And I don't know if it's the stars, the planets or the earth shifts, but what I'm getting now is, 
you know, I'm doing what I have to do. I, I trust source. I trust the angels. Nothing changes. It's a mess. The money's not coming in. Oh. Everything's not working out with the kids. Why is it like this? The angels aren't really working. In other words, source and the angels haven't come in to endorse our current choices. And we're only evaluating them in the natural we're not understanding that we can shift our energy in a direction that begins to propel us down a path of growth. So there's an element of responsibility that we have to take. And when we don't take it, honestly, Pat, and I have no judgment on this one, it's because we're so terrified yeah. of the outcome. We're so frightened. And so we go into such a panic mode, we start screaming. I mean, I had one client, you know, who wrote me and started saying, you know, not so good things about the angels. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. and like, I've just made all this up and I'm so angry because things weren't falling into place based on a prior decision. We all have that. We've all been there, but if we can acknowledge this total panic and terror we're feeling and then go, wow, how do I bring Source and the Archangels into this mix right here, right now, yeah. and, and let myself sit with it? You can sit with it for two minutes. Two minutes is excruciatingly long. We all know this, right? <laughs> so two minutes. Come on, guys. Two minutes. And let yourself allow this to come in but the panic is so strong sometimes we need help in that right that's what i do that's what you do that's what a lot of us do to help people shift through this stuff and i have great sympathy for the fear and the panic that we have of make about making our lives work yeah i love what we're talking about you know we had somebody hack one of our websites leslie and yeah. out of all the websites that they could have hacked they hacked the lime talk radio website so that's how I know we're on to something. Uh, that's how I know we're on to communicating something about something that is really important that somebody has heard us talk about that they are saying we need to shut these people up. Mm-hmm. Because when you hack a site like Lime Talk Radio, the way that they hack Lime Talk Radio, and you get in there, and what you do is you bombard the site with, are you ready, Leslie? Close to, oh, my God, it's like, I don't even know what the bandwidth is. It's like 100 gigabytes. No, actually, it wasn't. It was like 600 gigabytes of hacking. Wow. That is a lot of hacking. And so what I love about this is, yeah, we went to a place of, Merrick, please help us with this. And what he said is, dude, they are hacking your comments field. You know what I love about that? We're going to do stuff so that site doesn't come down because our fear cannot get in the way. But I wish I could say that when I saw that hacking, I didn't have a little fear. Let's take Uh a short break. Yeah. Leslie's in the house. Fear. What do we do with it? How does it affect our decisions? And by the way, what's the relationship between fear and blame in decision making? Stay tuned, everyone. Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy. When we come back, I'm going to let you know how you can contact her directly. Let's get rid of some of this and wait a minute. Decisions and procrastination. That is the giant P and And you overthink. Almost everyone at some time in their lives ask themselves, what am I? Most of our questions are ego generated and simply don't address the problem of our false self. It's time to relax your ego and embody your soul. Dr. Dan Cohen, neurologist, inventor, and author has created tools to awaken a new way to transform from who you thought you were into what you truly are. Visit toolstoawaken.com today. Get ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. 
Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people in living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie DeLuce at info at ronniedeleuceonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie DeLuce, your partner in wellness. Chris Stainis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Oh, absolutely. Do you think that Katy Perry knows a little bit about this in and out, up and down, left and right? Well, so does Leslie Fontaine. And, you know, it's one thing to have, you know, somebody like Leslie on the show uh, and that we have a lot of people on the show. And what happens is a lot of people are, are reading books and they're and they're telling you about what the academic experience of life is. But they're not coming to this show because this show is about. <laughs> you all saying this is what you want making the right decisions how do we know leslie before we jump back into this can you let folks know where you're going to be because you're also going to be in seattle but you're going to be in other places and then how can they work with you directly absolutely well i just got back from the uk which was absolutely fantastic to see and work with everyone there i am going to be in nashville tennessee this weekend working at the galactic expo and uh with clients as well and then i will uh, be in des moines iowa in june very excited about that show um, Seattle, July 23rd, August 13th and 14th here, uh, Ocean Shores, Washington, and then September 10th and 11th back in Durango, a fantastic show there, the whole expo there. So lots going on there. And if you want to work with me, you can find me at my website, lesliefontaine.com. That's L-E-S-L-I-E-F-O-N-T-E-Y-N-E.com. And my phone number is 678-665-3366. That's 678-665-3366. And I work with people constantly. I'm also about to be um, offering some teleclasses where, you know, from the comfort of your own living room chair, you can sign up for classes on empowering your own soul path. Creating daily abundance manifestations, that's a big one. Every day we can create abundance. And then becoming the hero in your own life. You know, how to really stand in your power, teaching us how to do that. And, you know, believe it or not, Pat, we're a little afraid to stand in our power. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm hoping you're going to talk a little bit about that today. Because, you know, standing in our power involves decisions as well, don't they? It does, because when we, you know, get decisions, which we talked about in the last segment, you know, we we get an understanding of our path and the way to go. We have this fear 
you know, about how it needs to unfold. So most of the time when I'm working with people, I go, well, how are you going to do that? Where's the money going to come from? Who's going to support you? I didn't know you were that smart, that tall, that cute, whatever it is, you know, we start tearing down the guidance that comes to us because it's coming from a much higher place, right? It's not coming from the mind. It's not coming from the emotions, but some of us that can feel it, feel great, feel an openness in our field, um, you know, so we have that piece, but then we begin to step into it and we start getting scared. So, you know what we do, which, you know, a lot of us don't want to admit when we get guidance, we start cutting back. We start trimming the corners. We start going, well, it can't be that big and it can't be with those people. And I'm not sure my confidence is there. Often when we get guided, it's to grow, Pat. It is to grow and enhance our field and this is what the ascended masters and archangels want to show us how to do where we mess up is sometimes we don't want to build in the preparation we don't want to lay the groundwork we don't we want it to happen quickly because we can't stand the suspense we look at our current situation we go well nothing here yet you know we panic and then we start changing the vision we throw in the towel and we go well that doesn't work and That's what happens. Then we get mad and we spent some money and we lost some people and we made some decisions and investments and we just, you know, recoil back and make a big declaration. So a lot of the so-called wrong decisions and right decisions are tied up in all of that. Well, when we look at some of these decisions, the right or wrong, um, you know, Leslie, I know you said you were talking with people. And, you know, you're finding that we're looking at things that we believe are in the way of our happiness, therefore in the way of our decision, therefore getting us to a place of pause or better yet procrastination. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's important for us to have a conversation about how fear does that and do those things go away when we can work through what the fear is. I don't know about you, but I've needed to get some help with this because sometimes I can't see what I can't see. I'd love to hear what your experience has been. Oh, my gosh. No. You know, fear is a comfort zone, Pat. Fear is a safety net. Nobody wants to hear that either. But it's true. We often will reel ourselves back in and hold back in fear because it keeps us safe. Being expansive, being huge you know, stepping into full-on happiness and joy, you know, that's scary. That feels like almost out of control. So fear kind of keeps our world finite, small, secure, even though, you know, we may not like it a whole lot and we complain about it. The minute you're working with a client, they start explaining to you why they can't change, why they can't do it, why they can't move it. You know, you have to then ask, So it sounds like you're not ready. Oh, no, no, I'm ready. Well, see, we have to choose to release that fear. I didn't say it goes away that very second. It's a decision to release that fear. Am I right now willing to release the fear? Am I right now willing to release the illness? Am I right now willing to release any attachments and hooks I have into my life, my partners, my job? my? Because the minute we release these hooks, we're terrified. Of what's going to happen. And then one of the things, Leslie, that we're looking at is, are we ready to say yes to abundance? Mm. You know, remember when I opened up the show, I asked the question about abundance. You work with people about abundance. And so if we're not ready to say, Leslie, I'm all in with the abundance thing, how does that affect the path we then take? And sometimes we say we're in, but we're not really. Right. But that also is that awesomeness part of this journey, right? This is a journey to reclaim our whole self, our higher self, our soul path, to take ownership, to stand in our power, and to release those things that no longer serve us. The things that serve us are the familiar. So stepping into abundance, often we get guided from our higher self, masters, light beings, to create something. It's unfamiliar. It's unknown. Often abundance is like that. Take this path, go this way, do this thing. Now, there's no shame in saying, no, I can't today. All right, 
You can't. You hear stories all the time about people. They got guidance years and years and years, and they so didn't listen, so didn't go there, they quit getting guidance. I don't hear anymore. So a lot of us have to reawaken that, right? We shut down out of fear. We shut down out of panic. But it's this understanding that we don't think God will come through, source will come through, universe, whatever we want to call it. We think we will be completely abandoned to our own devices. So abundance is this fantastic journey of allowing our energy, our higher self, the masters to draw into us this abundance that we so desire. But it also involves, like you said, a release of these hooks and fears. Absolutely. Today, what I'd like to say to everybody, for those of you out there listening to the show, if you want to get some help today, you know, this is really the best place to come do it. If you want freer, re, uh, fewer redos, uh, fewer messes, if you'd like to have more peace, more joy, more awareness, and think about this thing we call timing. I was sharing something interesting with Leslie uh, before the show about potential space that's available to us. Uh, how did that happen? Well, we're going to talk about that when we come back because the availability of getting assistance and not taking this journey alone is now. Uh, We'd love to open up the phone lines for all of you out there that would like to get some help now from Leslie, the Ascended Masters, and get some things cleared out here. Because if you really do want to live the path of abundance, if you want to live epic, if you want to be epic, then this is where you can come right now in the show to get some assistance here. I don't like to be blocked. It's one of the most horrific feelings that I've ever had in my life. I don't understand it. The word that comes to the plate is called overwhelm. Are we ready to say goodbye? 1-800-930-2819. Let's say goodbye to all of that. 1-800-930-2819. Want some help with a decision? Don't know how to make it? Tired of being in fear? I don't know about you guys, but you know, I'm telling you, I'm all in. 1-800-930-2819. Benny's taking your calls. We'll get you in here. For those of you that cannot call in right now, go to transformationtalkradio.com on the right-hand side, pop in your question, or go to the drpatshow.com, pop in your question. We're going to get it in here, get you some help. We'll be right back. Yes, it's true, I'm not good at a one-night stand But I still need love, cause I'm just a man Are you and your family looking for one manageable lifestyle change that will positively impact your health? Look no further. That change begins inside your drinking glass. Learn how to put a lid on junk drinking by sipping from a recipe collection of colorful, fresh, tasty, wholesome fruit and vegetable blends. Get your copy now of Sip the Garden. Fun, easy drinks for a healthier family by T. Carey Mitchell. Visit lifestyle120.com for information on how to order. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic hey everyone this is Dr. Pat I am so thrilled. I've had the honor of working with Leslie Fontaine for the past year or so. And what she has created in her hit program, Sheer Alchemy, transcends what most of us get to listen to or hear in any point in time in our lives. But beyond that, Leslie is working with people all over the world. And she has created something phenomenal based on the feedback and input from the Archangel, from the Ascended Masters, 
from the light beings, and most importantly, from each and every one of you. So if you want to change your life, if you're ready to step into your own version of Sheer Alchemy, please give Leslie a call at 678-665-3366. And why? Because this is what you're going to be prepared to do. Be amazed and on your part, connect with the Ascended Masters that are there to help you custom make the life that you are meant to live. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show that brings a real and dynamic message to uncovering and believing in the true amazing being you already are. Tune in and let Katherine help you become truthful, authentic, and mindful of living on purpose one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. The Angel Lady. Net. The Angel Lady. Net. The Angel Lady. Net. The Angel Lady. Net. 1-800-323-1790 Sue Storm The Angel Lady. Net. Hey, everybody, welcome back. You know, um, this is a big show. Leslie and I were talking about, we could have done two hours on this. Um, And the reason it's a big show is because here's what I want to say to all of you out there about this topic, making the right decisions. How do we know? I, I know, Leslie, I'm not talking about the major decisions. Like, I'm not talking about whether to launch a network with one channel or 10. But by the way, That decision wasn't made by a team of people sitting down and looking at analytics. Uh That was an intuitive decision. And Spirit jumped in and said, "Uh, what? One channel? Are you crazy? Uh And But I'm talking about other decisions. Like, for example, I'm sitting here and I have a diagnosis. Which doctor do I take? What direction do I go in? Or I'm in the grocery store and I'm a mom with five kids. And I'm thinking... I need to plan something for dinner. How do I do it? You know, how do I juggle? So we're not just talking about things that, you know, we hear the top 1% of the people thinking about. Uh What you're talking about is decisions we make every day because God forbid we pick something for our kids that they are not going to eat for dinner, right? Well, it could be, but I think every day the decisions are big yep. for that day. You exactly. know, um, it's not, you know, some something big to you may be small to me and vice exactly. versa, you know. And, and I think, honestly, many people um, have ha- major big decisions on their back burner all the time. They just don't know if they've got the courage, you know, the power or um, the support. And that's a big part of something you talked about earlier to, to follow through with it, like, if I do this thing, will I be supported? You know, will I be there? I think a lot of us have, you know, been in a place of not having enough food for the kids and, you know, hoping that the source will come through to provide that. I even, you know, did garage sales, you know, for, you know, getting school clothes and materials and all that for my kids. So we've all had these times and places of doing whatever we needed to be done. And that's the kind of the scraping by what I call the first chakra survival mode, you know, but even that brings up for us the level at which we're at in that place and we ask ourselves do I want to turn this around do I want to release that ancestral energy about survival that you know I'm I really can draw in more support than that so the right wrong decisions you know if we're looking at that I don't ever tell anybody how to make a decision I really don't and often the right wrong is really a very superficial judgment it's based on our family lines it's based on you know a lot of things that we've learned from our culture and and what we've learned is reasonable and a good business decision and it's amazing how much we can learn about how we make decisions just by that kind of stuff some of us swing all the way to the other side and go I'm only 
going to work in the feminine side of my energy and I'm only going to draw stuff in. I'm not going to take any action. Some work on total action and very little receiving, right? So we have to balance these things. But ultimately, I can tell you for sure that Source is going to tell you there is no uh, right, wrong in some of these decisions. I would say about 90% of our decisions, there's no right, wrong. What it's about is soul growth, soul path, standing in our power, you know, shifting into the greater us. And and I, I truly, truly know that to be true. Are there some things that have moral implications? Absolutely. Are there some mistakes that have severe consequences? Of course there are. But that's where if we're aware and enlightened, we're going to take a look at that and go, wow, what part of me was driving that bus? Well, what part of us does drive the bus, Leslie? And can we honor all the parts that drive the bus? Because right. isn't this part of what we're talking about? Yes. Right? When we it make is. bad decisions, sometimes we look at ourselves and say, oh, my God, I'm such a loser. Right. I'm the failure. I made this. No, you didn't. What part of you went into it? When I dissect decisions, I can tell you, I can point to fear was in operation here. Uh you know, rose-colored glasses in operation there, um, absolute joy and desiring of spontaneity over here. You know, we have to really look honestly in our field and also our experience of source not coming through. I bring up often with my clients source betrayal, the sense that nothing's going to come through for me. My spirituality is just great to talk about when everything's rosy. But when I hit the wall, when something goes wrong, it's up to me. I've got a white knucklet. I've got to make it happen. I've got to do the deal. And we completely throw that other stuff out. So even that's an awakening, right? It is an awakening. One of the things that you and I were also talking about, which I'd like to uh, mention today for people is, here we are, and we're talking about decisions. So Leslie, what does a good decision feel like? I know that we have all had that experience, but what does it feel like? And how do you help others identify that feeling? Okay. Well, this is, it sounds, you know, I know you didn't mean for this to sound simplistic, right? <laughs> We're going to agree that this is not just, you know, surface, but it's let's never been simplistic it. for me. It's all a right. Process. So let's go into the throat space. First of all, already I feel out there in radio land, a lot of tightness in the throat space, which is speaking our truth, speaking the intention, not, you know, just getting choked with fear. Okay. So that's, that's one thing right there. We know how powerful we are when we articulate. Then we have our heart space where, you know, we can be really, really tight. So where do we get the sense of a strong decision? We talked earlier about, you know, the higher self connection, feeling really guided into a sense of purpose, really wanting to create something special. So in that moment, we say yes. After we say yes, we start to draw into us some additional thoughts and tactical decisions, right? Things start to come to you, just like with the building you were talking about. Things start to come up like, okay, call this person, check into this, check into that. And we start to take some actions that show up, but it all starts with saying yes first. Where we make the bad decision is when we get guidance of an action to take and we go, oh, I can't do that. I can't go over there. I can't start that. Well, what will people think? Well, no one's going to support me. Where am I going to get the money for that? How am I going to do that? So we even, we completely shut down the conversation. We shut down the opportunity. We don't go there. And so what happens? We internalize it. We shrink down. Our field contracts. And that's what a bad decision feels like. It feels like our field contracting. We don't have to wait for the outcome. We don't have to wait for the consequences. The bad decision is not really a bad decision. It's sort of like not following what the steps are that have been given to you. Mm. Well, you know, one of the things, Leslie, I want to ask you if you could share an example. I know in my life, you've heard me talk about this before. Um, I dialed the wrong phone number and I didn't hang up. That's a decision not to hang up. And I remember what that feels like, right? (laughs) I didn't hang up. And, you know, everybody around me has asked me, why didn't you hang up, Pat? You know, we know you. You know, you're like this girl that moved here from New York and you staying on a wrong phone number. What happened? 
I don't know what happened. I know it did happen. Maybe you can explain it. It isn't that simple. It isn't, but there's a few things going on. So first of all, there's a sense of timing, right? I've been doing this work for several years, all right? If I was looking at this from a profitability standpoint, I mean, we'd all be looking at me like I was crazy, but I'm not, all right? So when I get phone calls and I get emails and I get contacted by people who tell me what the work has meant to them and what the effect has been it reinforces what I understand which is that I'm doing service work now let's put that aside right because there's a short term in the short term I'm doing a lot of things with some potential long-term gain what's my expectation is my expectation I'm going to be super wealthy super famous and everybody's just going to become banging down my door you know that is an interesting level that we can talk about in another show so a lot of times we want to look at what we think the outcome is supposed to be. The other thing is, you know, what are we trying to create with this thing? If I have areas where maybe I ignored a certain piece of information that came to me because I was afraid or I chose not cre- to create a class or I chose not to go to a certain city or I looked at everything in terms of the short term outcome and result, then I'm going to miss the big picture. So I have a way of taking the vision, but then making a few mistakes. Do you see that? I could go no to this, yes to that, and and fall into fear over here and be totally bold and off the rails over there. I don't want to be off the rails. I know you don't want to be (laughs) off the rails. I want, you know where I want to be off the, you know where I want to be off the rails? I want to be off the rails in my abundance. Yeah. I would like to be off the rails in my abundance. And, you know, I don't even know what that means right now, but I do know that when that is the groove that, uh, and it's not just me here, I would, I get to show up with you today because behind the scenes is an amazing group of people. Right. And I have never met a group of people that are literally on the same page. And, you know, we don't do a lot of process and procedures in our team. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We just honor the talent here. And one of the things I've got to ask you about to talk about when we come back is trust. Yes. Trust. I think the word empowerment is so overused. And the element that's left out of that word is trust. Empowerment without trust is shallow. And, and I would love for you to talk about trust and decisions because I, I, I knew we should have had two hours. But I think if we don't at least talk about what that means from your perspective, yeah. we're going to be missing a tool to give to people. What do you think? Well, I want to throw something out before we go to break, which is... Or maybe we my, just skip the break. Let's just my, skip the break. My topic that I speak to everywhere I go, the title of my topic... Do you want to know what the title of my topic? I do. The title of my topic is Creating the Platform for Outrageous Abundance. So when I talk about, you know, off the rails abundance, or you talked about it, what do we mean by that? We have to have the platform, right? So how abundance occurs is not without any clearing and shifting and and transforming some of those blocks in our energy field. But it is through that process that we uncover those blocks. And that's the important thing, you know, is that the path and the journey lead us through this. And I have had so many people share to me what has happened when they follow this process of identifying these blocks and not being so terrified to look at them that they go, am I done with this yet? It's okay if you're not, but if I am, I'd like to release it. How does outrageous abundance not happen? When we're holding back here and there to, you know, not fully step into all of it because we're afraid. That's how it doesn't happen. So sometimes, you know, back to that statement, we are the wand. We are the wand to examine our own field, to take a look honestly and ask ourselves, am I willing to release these interferences so that I can step into all that I am? Well, you know, one of the things, too, that I know we're going to talk about is it, do I really believe that? And how do we use a uh, Leslie? How do we use the energy of source? Because if we're not going to, if we're not going to trust, let, let's just throw trust out there. Here's some of the things that people don't trust right now. I don't trust that I'm going to have this job for the rest of my life. I don't trust that perhaps, you know, in the end, things are going to be there for me. I'm going to be taken care of. But so where do I want to put my energy and time? What do I want to trust? And how, how can I get on a path where every day when I'm faced with how to wake up in the morning and lead my day, that I can trust source, ascended masters, archangels, whatever the people believe in here that are listening. Mm-hmm. 
How do we get to a place where we know that we are in the best possible hands with that level of trust than we can imagine? Well, we do know that people are not our source. Jobs are not our source. (laughs) Our pension is not our source. Our loved ones are not our source. Trying to make our parents be the parents we wish they would be is not our source. So, you know, we came through on purpose. We came through this lifetime with the setup that we've got, and we're clearing this stuff. So, you know, we have an opportunity to look at everything as an opportunity to shift. But so often we want to dwell in the old story. So then I ask again, are we ready to let go of the story about what went wrong, my abuse, this that happened, that that happened, my upbringing wasn't right? Because source comes in and defies the economy, defies you know the party line, defies what your job is telling you and your family is telling you, and says, release all these old beliefs. They're artificial. They're blocking your field. And I want you to understand that you have an unlimited opportunity to come in. When I talked earlier about that two minutes of holding holding space and how excruciatingly long it is. That's what this is. So take that two minutes, three times a day. It's a challenge. It's a challenge for the week. Three times a day. Try it. Two minutes to fully sit in your power to allow the presence of archangels, source, light beings, masters to come in and sit with your intentions and clear out and release everything that shows up that says it can't happen. Wow. You know, one of the things that um, so often we don't talk about, maybe we should talk about it for a moment, is this idea that we cannot overturn a bad decision. Mm. So let's say we make a bad decision. And the part of that that gets us so upset is this idea that, okay, I made the bad decision. I'm really doomed right here. And, you know, what is really the truth of that? I know we can't go back and change the past, but we don't have to live that bad decision over and over and over again in our life story. And I think we do that. We do. And the thing is that it's a bad decision on what level, right? Right. We made the best decision we could in that moment with the information we had, the energy we had, and how long we could sustain our fear or, you know, anything else. Like sometimes you talk to clients and go, you know, I I knew I had guts that would last 15 minutes and that was my 15 minutes and I had to do something, you know, or other times, you know, we'll hear about someone, you know, so overcome with love for a child, they lifted the car off the child, right? in the the middle of an accident. So we know that we have these amazing, amazing times, but we have the opportunity to shift into something new in that moment of so-called consequences, karma, outcomes of a decision that we made. Is it bad? Where did we get the label? And what are we saying? Are we saying that the situation didn't turn out the way we wanted it to? Are we saying that people didn't do what we thought they would, should, or could? What are we saying? You know, because often what happens is that source can go, wow, want to try that one again? Yeah. And one of the things that we do is we do get the same situations over and over again. I know that happened for me. I know it happens for you. Uh, And, you know, we can learn how to tap into that source energy to pretty much figure most things out, right? I mean, this is not just about let me tap into source energy for the big decision. Right. It's it's all the time. It's throughout the day. You know, I tell people all the time, don't go into that neighborhood alone. Put on your protection everywhere you go. It doesn't right. mean if you're walking into your own house, you know, we let people, you know, we won't let them track in dirt on a white carpet on the soles of their shoes. But by God, we'll let them bring in crap on their energy field. So, I mean, this happened to me yesterday. You think I know better, but some <laughs> of us forget. OK, we think, oh, it's my child. It's my loved one. It's a safe situation. It's not that you're putting up barriers to your loved ones. What you're doing is you are protecting your energy so that if you had a dream or a desire, and Pat, I know you know what I'm going to say on this one because you probably have been here too. You get all excited about your dream or desire, right? You get this real inspiration and you can't wait to tell someone. 
So you're just all hyper and excited. And that person that you're going to tell walks in the door and they've had a crap day or they say something negative or whatnot. And you about want to cry. And you're going, I can't believe this. And I'm so hurt. And what does it do? It almost like shrinks down that whole thing. Right. And you just don't do it. And you're thinking, really, I gave my power away that easily. I just handed it over based on whether somebody else had a good day or not. Really? So it's amazing what these things can show us about ourselves. <laughs> you're absolutely right about it because, you know, you're right. I, I mean, I had, a, I had such a childhood flash when you talked about that white carpet right there. You know, I grew up in an Italian family where our couches were covered with plastic. Oh, Are you kidding me about walking in there with dirty shoes? Holy cow, I just had a flashback about that. Oh, uh, God. You are I not know. Find and any we've plastic all got triggers like that. Yeah, we've <laughs> all got triggers like this, right? And we think, oh, well, I'm an adult now. You know, this is 40 years later. I shouldn't be reacting like that. You know, that's what's so funny. If we haven't healed it, we haven't healed it. We've shoved it down. We've moved it to the right. We've moved it to the left. We have not healed it. So, it's amazing how we continue to react to that, right? We're continuing to be hyper vigilant and anxious, like, okay, I don't want to go this way, I don't want to go that way. Notice all the parts of yourself that you check and double check and triple check before you make a decision. That is not spontaneous, that's not being open to spirit, and that's not how abundance happens. Yeah. And, you know, here we are. So let's do this really quickly because I don't want us to be jumping off here because you and I get going and we lose track of time. I know. I know. All right. People listening to the show, Leslie, what's the best way? Two things. How can they work with you directly on this? And then also, please let folks know again where you're going to be. Well, I have been working with some amazing people coming through some hugely challenging situations. And if you would like to work with me to shift, to transform, to, you know, put yourself on a healing program that is so profoundly transformational, you can go to my website, lesliefontaine.com, L-E-S-L-I-E-F-O-N-T-E-Y-N-E.com, or call me at 678-665-3366. I do uh, 20 minute free consultations to get a sense of what you'd like to do and I hope you know I'm not coming from the place of ego I am so honored to work with the masters and archangels and healing teams I work with I can't even tell you the amazing things that happen and so it's a real honor to work with you too I'm also going to be at a few shows coming up in Nashville um, next week one of our radio listeners Pat called me from Nashville yesterday so very cool and um, we're going to be in Seattle July 23rd I'm going to be in Colorado in uh, September, Ocean Shores in August, Iowa in June. I'm everywhere. I love it. And you know what I love? And this is just the beginning of this because there are parts of what happens when we follow this guidance, Leslie, that even you and I sitting here today cannot even know. We can't know. And yet at the same time, we know that when something comes up now, we have some tools, and that's really the body of work that you're talking about. You're helping people so that they don't have to go, in my case, through three decades of being stuck, right? Right. We, we don't have to do that anymore. We don't. We don't. And it's okay, though, if we did. You uh, know, that's again, me. no shame. There's no harshness. And I love your story, Pat. I love my story. I love a lot of people's stories because we've been shamed into thinking, well, why didn't you do this by the time you were 30? And what happened to you? What took you so long? You know what? You all are right on time. And it's great. And today's your time. Today you say yes. Today you step into it. And you begin your healing now. And you can accelerate it or slow it down as much as you like. And, you know, one of the things I want to say, Leslie, uh, and for those of you listening, you don't have to have what you may be thinking in your mind is a big thing to work with Leslie on. Because sometimes we don't know the big things that are underneath the iceberg. Absolutely. We don't know them. No. But we only know a point of stuckness. And Liz, Leslie will help get underneath there in a safe, caring, insightful way with bringing in the Ascended Masters and anybody else that comes in. Because that's really part of it, Leslie. Sometimes it's not everything under the iceberg. Something, it's something on the tip that's getting in our way. Yeah, 
and then the iceberg shows up, doesn't it? I mean, I have dealt with some people with such profound, you know, violations um, in the past week, and the cover was just to get along and you know, go along. And when we hit the depth of some of these experiences that occurred this lifetime, other lifetimes, it has a huge effect. And when we remove that obstacle, life changes. It is no longer what it used to be. So that's the opportunity, Pat, and it's exciting to watch when it happens. I love it. Leslie, give out your website, please, and again, your email and contact information. Thank you Absolutely. for today. Absolutely. Oh, it's great. LeslieFontaine.com. That's L-E-S-L-I-E-F-O-N-T-E-Y-N-E.com, 678-665-3366, and you can write me at Leslie at LeslieFontaine.com. And for those of you out there, if you've missed any part of this, this will air again tonight on Transformation Talk Radio as well as the Dr. Pat Show. Uh, if you go to Leslie's website or you just Google Sheer Alchemy, you will see all of the shows that Leslie's doing take you right to her website and you'll be able to connect with her and see what she's up to and, and really decide for yourself, what kind of help would I like right now? And how can I get it quickly? And Leslie's there to help you. Uh, Thank you all for tuning us in, turning us on. Stay tuned. We've got another hour coming up. And we're going to talk about those parents. But talk about it in a really interesting way. All right, everybody, stay tuned. We'll be right back with the show. The audio was via a Skype call.